In the quiet expanse of Nyabani, a small village in Plum Tree, Johnson Sipoko Moyo, a 77-year-old, lived on his compound with his son Seten Moyo, a 26-year-old, and his two grandchildren, Andreas, a 5-year-old, and Priscilla Moyo. Johnson was upset that four of his cattle had recently gone missing, and since cattle is the major source of livelihood for people in the village, he was frustrated. He then decided to consult Sangomas and Prophets on the 3rd of August 2014 to determine who had stolen his cattle. The day began with a routine with Johnson assigning his son Seten the task of dipping cattle before telling him his plan to go to Ulawayo. As the morning progressed, Johnson unpanned his cattle, intending to leave them at the grazing area. The cattle pens, a symbol of livelihood, will soon become a backdrop of something far more sinister. Johnson left the homestead wearing a khaki trouser, blue exo jacket, farmer shoes while carrying a black bag. This was the last time he was seen alive, vanishing without a trace, leaving behind a community in quiet disbelief. The family realized that he never actually arrived in Bulawayo and did not know what had happened to their beloved father. The days turned into months and the months turned into years with no sign of Johnson. It was only until the 17th of January 2016 Two long years later that Johnson's remains were discovered in a well in the village. He was identified by his national ID, driver's license and the clothes that he was last wearing because his body was in a later stage of decomposition. The villagers hoped the discovery of his body would bring closure but instead it brought even more grief. The body was taken to a hospital for post-mortem and the cause of death was determined to be severe head injuries, multiple skull fractures, and assault that spoke of a brutal end to his life. When the police investigated the case of murder, it did not take long before their main suspect was his own son, Seten, who was 26 years old at the time of his father's disappearance. His son, who had been five years at the time of the disappearance, told the police that his father had struck his grandfather with an axe and put him in a wheelbarrow and hid him in a cave. He also claimed that Seten's friend, Jaffet was there at the crime scene but did not participate in the crime. The police were convinced by the detailed narration of the now seven-year-old boy and arrested Satan. It was later confirmed by Johnson's friend Tambo Nuve who said that Johnson had confided in him that he believed that his son and his friend Jaffet had stolen his cattle and they had a big fight with his son and promised to catch him at the Sangomas. The court proceedings painted a picture of a strained relationship, a family torn apart by the son's thievery. The trial held in the High Court of Zimbabwe was a meticulous affair as evidence was weighed and the rules of evidence meticulously applied. Justice Makonese found the little boy's account believable because when he was cross-examined, he never changed his story and the description of the murder matched the post-mortem results. He found him guilty of murder and sentenced him to death for killing his father in such a brutal way. He condemned Satan's lack of remorse and denial of his crime even when sufficient evidence was presented in court. The case of Satan Moyo remains etched in the annals of Zimbabwe's legal history as a somber reminder of the fragility of human relationships and the depths to which they can descend. May his soul continue to rest in peace.